Welcome to Team Help Desk for Outlook and SharePoint. In this demonstration, we will explore how to install, configure and work with a customer service website that is connected with Team Help Desk and Outlook. There are basically five steps required for a successful configuration of a customer web service site. The first step is to set up a web folder as virtual directory in your IIS server. Select your existing website in your IIS manager and right click to choose new and then click virtual directory. You will be prompted with this virtual directory creation wizard that will guide you to create a new virtual directory on your existing website. And type the alias for the virtual directory, say CWS. And specify the physical folder on the local server to map to this alias. For this demo, I will select this physical folder located in the C drive on this server. Here, you need to specify read and run scripts permissions for this virtual directory. And finish the virtual directory creation wizard. You can see the new virtual directory, CWS, with a gear symbol under the IIS manager. Now, right click CWS and go to ASP.NET tab. Here, you need to select the version of ASP.NET. Select version 2.0.50727. Click OK to save the changes. The second step is to set the CWS virtual directory as a shared network folder. Right-click the CWS folder and select Sharing and Security to invoke the Properties dialog. In this Sharing tab, select the option Share this folder and go to Permissions. By default, any users on the local network have read permission over the shared folder. For our needs, we need to allow all help desk managers to have full control permission. You can either add individual user or a group. In our example, we have defined a group service desk comprising of all help desk managers so that setting permission for all users can be done in a single click. Check the option Full Control. Likewise, add the same help desk group under the security tab and grant full control access. Notice that the shared folder would now appear with a hand icon to signify a shared resource over the network. The third step is to place all the customer web service files and subfolders into the shared network folder. Go to the Team Help Desk Manager Programs file folder in your system. There you will find this zip file customer web service that contains all the web files and subfolders. Extract all these contents to our CWS shared network folder. The fourth step is to set the ASP.NET permission on the temp subfolder. Right click and go to Properties and Security tab. Select the ASP.NET account. 
different version of IIS server has different ASP.NET account name. For example, in IIS version 5, it is ASP.NET. And in IIS version 6, it is IIS underscore WPG group. Whereas in IIS 7 version, it is IIS underscore USRS group. In our case, we have IIS 6 version. So, we will allow the IIS underscore WPG group full control over the temp subfolder. The final step now is to configure the customer web service specific settings from the Team Help Desk Manager tool in Outlook. Open the Web Access Settings panel. Here, in this customer web service portion, enter the UNC path to the CWS network folder. You can check this option to allow Team Help Desk Manager Add-in to update the customer web service specific settings data automatically when there is any change in the Help Desk settings in Outlook. Check this option to create or update knowledge base data specific files in the CWS network folder. Check this option to make the custom fields available in the support request submission web form. Check this option to make the asset fields available in the support request submission web form. Lastly, here you can input the actual URL to the customer web service site, which your callers can have access with a web browser. Now, we are all set. Click the Update Data to save and finish the customer web service configuration. Doing this will save or update the customer web service specific metadata files in the CWS Network web folder. If you open the bin subfolder in the virtual directory, you will find a number of XML files that were generated by Team Help Desk Manager Add-in from Outlook. Now, our customer web service site is successfully set up. We can now open it from a web browser. The customer web service is a collection of ASP.NET web pages that cater to the help desk end users on the web. It consists of a structured support request web form, a support case status form, a self-service knowledge base, and a special web interface, exclusively for existing callers to access their support cases online. This is the support request form. New support requests are submitted in customer web service site via this web form. This form consists of fields for problem description, caller details, and problem category and type. If there are any active knowledge base articles, the relevant articles would show up based on the selected problem category and type. This facilitates the end user to look up the related articles for a possible solution to their problems before submitting a new support request. It not only addresses the problems of the end users instantly, but also prevents any recurring or redundant problems to be reported to the help desk. This, in turn, helps in making the help desk resources available to other tasks. End users can also upload any number of files as attachments. When the end user submit this support request, 
team held desk manager at an in your outlook would process and generate a new support case in the ongoing cases subfolder. And the end user will be notified automatically with a unique case number. Additionally, the email can contain credentials that caller can use to log into the caller web access site to track their support cases online. This is the support case status web form. Very often many support cases are logged quickly, but the resolution to the problem may take longer. In such situation, it might not be feasible to keep the caller in the communication loop regularly. More importantly, the help desk might be overwhelmed with the status queries on their pending support cases. And that may unnecessarily divert valuable resources and time. With this web-based status tracking form, curious callers can check the status and other details on their cases online very quickly without having to write or call the concerned help desk. It also avoids the additional load on the help desk and allows the technicians to focus on problem solving rather than answering status of the case. This is the web version of the Team Help Desk Knowledge Base. The KB articles present here are the published version of the Team Help Desk Knowledge Base articles in Outlook. With these online articles, end users and customers experiencing technical challenges can self service the answer to their problem by accessing this web based knowledge base. End users may click through the problem categories and types to find the self service answers they are looking for. Self service articles may also be searched via keywords. Now, to the final feature, Caller Web Access. The Caller Web Access is a subcomponent of the customer web service site, through which callers can log in to track the progress and status of their support cases. The site requires caller to authenticate their credential by inputting their email address and password that was provided by the help desk staff via email. Once logged on, the caller would be able to see all their support cases under the My Cases member area. The cases are sorted by the last modified date and time in descending order. The caller can click any one of the support case and open the selected case in a new window to have a detailed view. The support case form consists of many fields, including custom and asset fields that might be used for in-house properties. Most of the fields here are read-only. And few fields, like the caller information, are editable by the caller. However, to further escalate the case, caller can compose new problem description into this box and submit. They can also have the flexibility of uploading any number of files as attachments to the current case. This will automatically get updated into the support case item in the ongoing cases subfolder in Outlook. It would also notify the assigned technician to get their attention to the new escalation.
if the caller has already found a solution to the problem or was helped by a solution recommended earlier from the help desk, they can't simply withdraw the case. In short, with the caller web access, a caller can submit new support request, escalate ongoing support case, withdraw ongoing support case, and reopen close support case. This concludes this video demonstration.